Hello everyone and welcome to Tutor Terrific. Today I am going to prove the Pythagorean identities. Now these are three identities that are used commonly in analytic trigonometry, which means algebra-like trigonometry. Now these are called identities because any angle can be substituted for theta. They are not trigonometric equations in which only one or a certain set of angles it works in them. Any angle substituted in for theta works in the identities. So these are very important. Why also are they called Pythagorean identities? Well, think of a right triangle and think of the Pythagorean theorem. We have a squared plus b squared equals c squared for the Pythagorean theorem. If you look at all of these, they have the same sort of form if you realize that 1 squared is equal to 1. So that's why they're called the Pythagorean identities. Now, on to proving them. We're going to prove them one at a time with this right triangle right here. Okay. Keep in mind the Pythagorean theorem. We will use it. Let's start with the first one. Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. What I am going to do is I'm going to define a specific angle that I'm going to use in my proof. This one, this acute angle theta. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up an expression for each of these trig functions in the very first Pythagorean identity. Sine theta, when it comes to this triangle, would be opposite over hypotenuse, so b over c. Similarly, cosine theta, which is another term in the expression, is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, so a over c. Now I'm going to, as the identity does, square both of these and add them together. So I will get sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. I'm going to write what those equal. They equal b squared over c squared plus a squared over c squared. Now, I'm going to combine these two fractions, and it can be done very quickly because of the denominators being the same. So this is going to equal b squared plus a squared all over a single c squared. But recall the Pythagorean theorem that I wrote over here. a squared plus b squared itself equals c squared. So what I have on top is c squared now. And on bottom, I also have a c squared. These cancel each other, and I get 1. Thus, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. We have proved the first trigonometric identity. Now for the second one. 1 plus tangent squared equals secant squared theta. Okay. So what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to write the expressions for tangent theta and secant theta. Tangent theta would be equal to opposite over adjacent. So that is b over a. Secant theta would equal the reciprocal of cosine. That is how secant is defined. So secant theta would be equal to a hypotenuse over adjacent. So c over a, which is the reciprocal of a over c, cosine theta. Now, according to the identity, we're going to add 1 plus tangent squared theta, and it's going to be equal to secant squared theta. So let's do that. 1 plus tangent squared theta. This is equal to 1 plus b squared over a squared. Now comes the algebra. We are going to get a common denominator here. We can often start that process by seeing the first number as a fraction by putting it over 1. That doesn't change anything about its value. So as you can see, this fraction by least common multiples needs an a squared. And the other one already has the a squared. So I'm going to have to multiply this fraction by a squared over a squared. So I get that 1 plus tangent squared theta equals a squared over a squared plus b squared over a squared. And I can combine these two fractions now into one because their denominators are the same. 
So I have that common denominator. On top I have a squared plus b squared. Okay? Again, the Pythagorean theorem says that the numerator itself is equal to c squared. Now, that might look familiar to you. If you jump back up here, it's equal to this squared. So it's equal to secant theta squared. Equals secant squared theta. So now I have a direct connection between 1 plus tangent squared theta and secant squared theta. We have done the proof of the second trigonometric identity. And now for the last and final Pythagorean identity. 1 plus cotangent squared equals cosecant squared. As we did before, we're going to make expressions for both trig functions that appear in the identity. Cotangent theta would be equal to the reciprocal of tangent theta. So it would be equal to adjacent over opposite. So A over B. And then cosecant, oop, excuse me, I have to make that mistake, cosecant theta would be equal to the reciprocal of sine, so it would be hypotenuse over opposite, C over B. Okay, so I'm going to set up the expression for 1 plus cotangent squared and show how it leads directly to cosecant squared. Co 1 plus cotangent squared, theta, will be equal to 1 plus A squared over B squared. Now, common denominator. Again, we will write the first fraction as 1 over 1, so we can see that it needs to be multiplied by b squared, so that we have common denominators, okay? And so now, 1 plus cotangent squared theta is going to be equal to b squared over b squared plus a squared over b squared. Get one fraction, because now the denominators are the same. We have b squared plus a squared over b squared. Now, let's talk about what b squared plus a squared is. Again, the Pythagorean theorem says that these two things added together for this triangle gives you c squared. So the numerator is now c squared, the denominator is b squared. But recall up here that c squared over b squared is also cosecant if I square it. So I have cosecant squared theta. So as you can see, direct connection between 1 plus cotangent squared and cosecant squared. You can see also why these are called the Pythagorean identities because they rely on the Pythagorean theorem to be proved. And so I have now done all three. All three proofs of the Pythagorean identities are here. Thank you so much for watching and this is Falconator signing out.